Hello, my name is Matt Denton, this is Mantis Hacks, and this is part four of my DeoDroid build. Well, I think I'm finally nailing down the drive system on Dio, and I've made some more changes since the last video, so I'm gonna talk about those first. You may remember I was slightly worried about how much torque these medium power motors could supply, uh, and I did feel that they're a little underpowered compared to the high power version, but that just wasn't smooth enough. First of all, I've reduced the size of this gear here. So this was a 25 tooth gear, and it's now a 22 tooth gear. So that's gonna give me about a 15% increase in torque. Uh, but of course I'm gonna lose a bit of speed with that as well, because I've been trying to keep the speed of the whole thing up. The medium power motors were all already uh, about 25% slower than the high power versions. To counteract that, what I've also done is I've upped the voltage on my DC-DC converter. So the converter is set at 12 volts output as standard. By adding a resistor between the trim pin and the positive output, and I've used a 330K resistor, I can increase the output voltage to around 13.8 volts which increases the torque, maximum torque from the motors, but also the maximum speed by 15%. So the 15% I lost in the gear reduction, I've gained back by increasing the voltage, and I've also incre increased their maximum power by another 15%. So overall, I'm getting about a 30% increase in power. And so I think that's what I'm gonna stick with for now. The motors seem quite happy at that extra voltage. I mean, then 12 volts are nominal anyway, so the extra 1.8 volts probably isn't gonna make much difference to them. I've also switched out the two servo motors, the Lynx Motion ST1 motors that I had inside of here that are running the neck pitch and the uh, head pitch motion. I found the ST1s were struggling a little bit. I was asking quite a lot of them because there's a huge lever on this. And even with the three to one gear ratio on the neck, um, the motor after a prolonged use would overheat and then it would go into a safety shutdown mode. So what I've done is I've switched it out for the HT1 version, the higher torque version. Not only is it higher torque, it's a much nicer servo. It has a, um, a higher grade motor in it and also has an aluminium heatsink case. It does run a little warmer as standard, but um, so far it's um, been quite happy inside of there, keeping the neck running uh, for prolonged periods of time. Uh, it does all get quite warm in here now with the, um, the DC-DC converter and the two servos down here. Um, so I'm going to watch the kind of temperature inside of this, this kind of core area. Maybe I'll have to put a little fan in, I don't know. Um, but for now it seems much happier with those servos and I'm getting a much smoother motion out of them. Um, so I'm very pleased with that at the moment. Now it's worth remembering of course that this um, the Maker Motor driver board from Arduino, there is still an issue with those uh, the input devices, the MOSFETs on there. I am now in discussion with Arduino about that. Don't forget on my board, I've modified it, I've removed them and I've put a shorting link in. Uh, and so right now this is running at 13.8 volts. It's actually stated to only run up to 12.6. I did check the schematic. I can't see any problem with running up to 13.8 volts and it seems quite happy right now. Um, it's been running for several weeks now with no issues. All I'm trying to say is don't put one of these in standard off the shelf because it probably isn't gonna work. It might actually burst into flames as I did originally. So um, just watch that. Before the end of the video, I'll put Dio back together and take him for a spin and also demo a new software feature I've added to him, which is kind of fun. But right now, it feels like I need to move on and look at the aesthetics of this droid and get him finished off. And for that, I need to introduce my special guest. I've moved to the shed because on this next part, I'm going to be looking at cosmetics. And for that, I've got my special guest. Some might say he's called Les Towersy, Les Trousery, but it's in fact Lee Towersley. Lee! Hello, mate. How are <laughs> hey, you doing? I'm all right. How good. are you? Yeah, good, thank you. It's very nice for you to join me here. Pleasure. You joined us on Star Wars. Yep, uh, I did. And you were a model maker, and you did yep. R2-D2 and yes. various other things. Yes, I Would did. Yeah. You describe so, yourself? Yeah, so the model making side of things is there's a lot... It's not just building, it's a lot of sanding and painting as well and prepping for the paint shop. This is something that's right up my street really, all something the, that comes through our workshop that we have to prep and, and make clean and nice. All the stuff I don't want to do. Exactly. 
Yeah. Brilliant. Hence why I'm down here <laughs> to help you out. <laughs> Precisely. I've got another special guest to help me paint it. Oh, I see. Okay. But we're going to prep it. Uh, and I'm just a bit worried about like you know the flex on this and how well the paint will take and whether it will crack or not. But certainly you need to strengthen this as well. Maybe right. have the back plate in. Yeah, yeah. Or you could pack yeah. it out with something. I'm not sure packing. That would probably do it. Yeah. So just you want to make it rigid really because otherwise while you're sanding you're just going to be fighting against this flex all the time. Yeah. yeah I'll try to print it in the colours that you want to keep it in. So really you don't want to prime it in a different colour because then if you chip paint off, you're yeah, going to see the primer Yeah, exactly, colour. yeah. So what I would do with this one, I would try ch with maybe 400 grit mm -hmm. sandpaper just straight on the piece. I'm so lazy, I wasn't even going to bother. I was well, just going to leave it as you is. You could leave it. Pe it but people <laughs> can. People may, yeah. may do that, may choose to do that. But we'll yeah. see how this nose cone comes okay. out, I think. And um, we'll, we'll decide from there. I'm going to try with the 400 grit first of all okay. and see how that does. Um, and I'm just going to do it by hand as well. Do you not use a pad or anything? No, no, no okay. because what I what I find with a pad is that it can you can get flat spots in. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if yeah, you just yeah, use yeah. a piece of sandpaper with yeah. the curvature of your hand, that's I find works better. Now you're not expecting to be paid for this, are you? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure whether I made that bit clear. I thought you were taking me out for dinner later. Oh, well, there is that. <laughs> yeah. There'll be dinner and there'll be beers. That's fine by me. <laughs> There was a transition between the vent pieces here. Yes. So I'm trying to blend these two in. It's so that happens good. because it's a single perimeter extrusion. And when it gets to here, there's nowhere for the perimeter to go. So it has to be the vent as the outside part. So it's really annoying. Right, but gotcha. It's the only way you can get a really nice finish okay. on, the, on the outside yeah. piece. Yeah. Do you see yourself building one of these, Lee? Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm waiting in anticipation like everybody else for the files to be released. Uh, my printer's not doing anything at the moment, so... I think I'll just save the moment for when these files come out. Yeah. yeah. Favourite droid in Star Wars? I'll see D2. <laughs> <laughs> come on, it got me the job. Oh, God. So 1977. Favourite droid in Star Wars? BB-8, of uh, course. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I'll ask you a question Adam Savage asked me. So he said, other than BB-8, you know, you picked Good a question. droid you could build Good in any sci-fi, what, what would it be? Johnny Five. Johnny Five, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, Five. I could see that. Yeah. I was, yeah. that would be on my list. I actually went Ed Two O Nine, but um, okay. Johnny Five, I remember being blown away with. Favorite character in Star Wars. Favorite character? Yeah. Can it be a creature? Yeah. Because I was yeah. obsessed yeah. with the Rancor monster. Oh, okay. Yeah, I loved cool. the Rancor monster. Yeah. And, and I loved it because it was a massive yeah. toy as well. Yeah. I've got to be Hammerhead. 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 Yeah. 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 I was always fascinated with how it worked. Oh, how those stalky eyes were yeah. moving around and stuff like yeah. how how did they do that you know at the, top, at the time seeing as a kid when I was seven like mm. what the heck you know making sanding look exciting I don't think we are <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really going for perfect on this build I'll be honest the DO build for me is more about um the, the control algorithms and the yeah. and the way it moves and the personality. But that's um, your background. Exactly. That's, that's so what, I, I get about. to I get to this point and I lose interest. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's fair enough. So it's nice to be able to get some yeah, help with it. Yeah. We finish for the photography, not necessarily yes. for the film. No. Because the film is gone. Yes. You know, it's just very quick. Yeah, yeah. But then all the stills and the lovely posters, like the posters yeah. that have just come out now for yeah. The Rise of Skywalker, you know, it's those that you're making them for. Yes. For the stills and the post-ups. Yeah. Not just for the film. So yeah. uh, that's, that's why we always worry about the finish. PLA is quite nice to work with, really, even with sanding. You know, you were saying earlier on, it's just, as long as you don't go too hard on it, yeah. too coarse as well, that's, that's the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you're only doing the edges. I am just you're doing, only doing the edges. The edges yeah. so it's, it's, that's not so bad. I'm like the Jeremy Clarkson of sanding. <laughs> Power! <laughs> Fact. <laughs> Down here. <laughs> no! <laughs> Don't do it. That's just the area I've done. Yeah. Taking it down to the end here. And you can see the difference. Yeah. Sense of touch heightens with yeah. your eyes shut, and you can feel how smooth that is. Yeah. Um, and you can hear it as well. So this is the, the rough area. Yeah. And that's the smooth area. Nice. I did actually go up to 240 grit in the end. Right. So I find that 240 was best. Yeah. Um, and then just gradually work your way down. And then the final few, just wet it. And you get a nice polished finish. I'll see you in the morning then, yeah? <laughs> it could take a while. I'm just, uh, there's a pub just down the road. Bye. I'll see ya. <laughs> he was just pointing out that this has got some really bad stringing inside of the part here. As a, an idea to get rid of it really quickly, I just wondered whether we could run a blowtorch over it, which would burn off all the strings. 
uh, or a heat gun to start with because Lee wants to do it on camera because he thinks it's going to go horribly wrong. He's probably right. You're going to melt my hard work. Well, is that my hard I, hope, I hope not. This is a paint stripper. Gone. I'll tell you what, only works. Check that out. I mean, literally, like they vaporised, don't they? Yeah, it's pretty good. A little bit more on it's that side. Good. Be quick. Stop. Oh shit, did I go too no, far? No, it's all right. No, it's all right. <laughs> no, I'm just, just worried. It did start to go shiny, didn't it's it? good. I'm Boom. sure that's probably a known technique, but it worked brilliantly. Nice. If you're going to spray, make sure you wear a mask. Okay. Now I've coated this up, we're going to do the rest of them and leave them overnight and um, come, come back in the morning and try and knock back uh, the white paint on those, so that's just a primer we're using there. But with this, uh, Lee's saying we're going to use a filler primer. Yeah, this is a go-to stuff that a lot of the builders are using, the droid builders at the moment. Michael Badley's using this as well. So we're going to give that a go. We haven't sanded it, we haven't touched it it's straight off the printer. We're going to give it a couple of coats, let it dry overnight, see how it is, and then we're going to sand it back and see how it looks. All right, let's get some let's spraying go. done, and, uh, and then we'll go and get some beers or something. Good stuff. So next morning we're back in the shed. We painted these up last night, um, just with a white primer. Give those a little tickle with some sandpaper. This is the item we did with the putty. Um, it has better. filled in some of the lines already. Yeah. I think it might need another coat, but we'll give it a sand. Yeah, just we'll see how it looks. And because um, we don't we'll want to spend back. too much time on that, because it's not the actual Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't use filler primer on this. This was just uh, white primer. The very top bits, it's quite hard to get rid of those last layer lines, so we might just give this a quick blat with filler primer because Lee's bit has come up really nice. So you can see all of the print lines in this side still. And then this side is beautiful. Even that scar looks like it's disappeared, yeah. doesn't it? I think it'll need another just dusting of the filler primer yeah. just for a final sand, but yeah. it's tied up really well. And it's, I know it's not going to flex this much when you're using it, but you've still got the flex as well. It's not cracking no. or anything. So, um, yeah, all I right. think we should try it on the, the real head, the okay. one you've... you've yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's fill a prime yeah. all these bits and yeah. then we'll uh, cool. come back to them. Yeah. Lots and lots of sanding, I guess. And see how they turn out. Yeah, we'll have a look again in a minute, see what they look like. 30 minutes of sanding? 30 minutes, yep. yep. So this is the side I haven't done yet. That's what I haven't done. And then just go over here. And nice. Looking good. Nice. Looking a lot better. So the white pieces you see, that's where you're obviously to the filament now. And yeah. the putty you can see in between the lines. Yeah. Um, which is about the level you want to go sanding to. No further than that, because then you're just working on the filament again. Okay. On the PLA. So, um, you know, I might give it another dusting. Two, three coats of white onto all of the parts now, and I think they're looking really nice. Yeah, they're looking great. Yeah, I think you actually quite enjoyed that as well, Matt. Yeah, it was only because you were doing most well, of the work. Okay. <laughs> Model makers look out. Yeah. But no, that's looking really it's nice, good. isn't it? Um, yeah, it's nice. I'll get a yeah. close-up of this because uh, you'll see how, how well that's come out. Definitely. Uh, but I think the, the piece de resistance is the this piece, which you spent loads of time on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just beautiful. All the lines, so yeah. yeah, It's great. Very nice. Cool. Thank you very much for your help, Lee. No problem. And if you've got um, this far, viewers, well done. Because sanding's not the most exciting of things to watch. I appreciate it. Don't worry, so, I'm going to uh, cut in bikini shots and all sorts. Great. Right. So. Sounds good. <laughs> I might even watch it then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go inside and uh, yeah. get a cup of good tea stuff. or something. Okay. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciated having Lee coming in to help me uh, with some of these cosmetics and uh, preparing the parts for painting because I don't have the best patience in the world when it comes to things like that. This part we decided not to do anything with because um, it's so intricate. If we had put filler primer on it, it probably wouldn't have made much difference and uh, it's looking pretty good as it is. Uh, you can see the uh, print lines inside the head there. On the outside, it's completely smooth. So that's ready to go on. It's looking really nice and it's uh, ready for final painting and weathering. As you've probably noticed, I've moved the electronics from the back of here 
and I've put them back inside the head. And that's just to try and distribute some of the weight more evenly in the head. I don't know how much difference this speaker will make because it's just firing sound into the head cavity. The front speaker does most of the work anyway. I think taking the weight off the back of here has made quite a bit of difference though because it's not kind of bouncing on the back of that head. Anyway, it's probably time I put Dio back together and take him for a spin. I noticed there was a lot of slop in the servos on the neck pitch and the head pitch and I hadn't seen it before. So for example, all this play here. And uh, when I took them apart, one of these screws had, had worked its way out and dug into the back of this servo and I think that probably caused the screws to loosen off in the front because all that play is actually the servo moving. So it's prompted me to maybe put some parts and packing down the side of the servo so that if the screws loosen enough it can't actually move this way so it kind of slot into a groove let's say down the side. But this uh, cog also had some play in it and this is where it's joined through to the axle that joins onto the neck and the screws were slightly loose, which allows for that much movement on the cog. It ends up with a large amount of play in the neck. So it's worth going around and checking everything's tight. I might even add the four more screws into this as I've got space for them. So this new feature I've added into the software is a position hold feature. He still does his balancing, but what happens now is uh, when you move to a new position, uh, the, when you let go of the sticks, the software lo locks that position in. So now if I drag him back over here and let go, he'll go back to where he was. So I bring him back here a little bit with the sticks and let go. Now push him forward, he'll go back to where he was again. And the reason why that's quite useful is uh, if you end up on a slight incline, um, Dio will just want to drift all the time down the incline. And you have to use the sticks to pull him back a little bit. Whereas theoretically this should, at a certain point, just hold him in one position. Those motors seem to be working really nicely. There's uh, still plenty of speed there and they've got a little bit more torque. I have actually switched back to 12 volts on the DC-DC converter because I felt everything was getting a little bit warm inside but it's all working uh, quite nicely at 12 volts. The Lynx Motion servos now working very nice. I've switched to the high torque versions. I still need to revisit the head because this clamp still keeps moving here and I've got to get rid of that wobble so I've ordered up some different servos to try out on that. I'm getting about one hour to one and a half hour run time on the battery so that's pretty good. The control algorithms are fairly well tuned up right now and it's pretty easy to drive. The problem I have is knowing when to stop tuning them but uh, I think right now I'm going to have to stop and move on and fix some of those problems with the head, get the antennas finished off and of course uh, finally get it painted. Well, I'm going to have another special guest help me paint it at some point, but I don't think they're going to be available until the new year. So that's going to have to wait. I need to thank my guest again today, Lee Towsey, for coming in and helping me prepare the parts. And of course, don't forget, there's plenty of information in the description section below, along with links to Michael Badley's original designs, and of course, the DO Builders Facebook page. So that's it for now. Bye. <laughs> Back in the shop. There goes Logan.